Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here, thank you so much for watching. In the past month, I've had several colleagues and family members ask me in different words basically the same question. And the question was, how can I, without being a network expert, still do something in my uh, uh, Wi-Fi network to improve performance and stability? I've had one uh, relative said that if he takes his phone to a certain area of the house, the phone keeps connecting to Wi-Fi and then disconnecting and connecting and disconnecting. And he says, I don't care how much will this device score on speed test. I want it, I want it to connect reliably. And these are exactly the things that we are going to touch on on this video. I've selected the three most basic essential things you can easily do on your Wi-Fi network and another bonus one towards the end of the video. And I've selected specifically all these settings because they're easy to implement. You don't need to be a network admin. They are, they do not, or at least they're not supposed to cause any backwards compatibility issues. And they're somewhat universal. So even if you're, you're not using Unify and you have some other vendor uh, uh, hardware, these settings are somewhat universal and you can still uh, play around with, it, with them. So uh, we are in Unify and we are using uh, uh, the, the new user interface. And the first place that we want to go before we uh, uh, change anything is right here, the new uh, uh, Wi-Fi a Wi-Fi Insight page right here and the reason we will go into this page first of all is because uh, Ubiquiti gives us at least a fighting chance to understand our RF environment, our radio environment and why do we need to know our environment is because of channels which brings me to the first recommendation you need to select the channels for your access points to broadcast in the 2.4 gigahertz and uh, 5 gigahertz bands are all divided into sub-channels and you need to select the sub-channel that most uh, fits your uh, environment and we need to select the, the channel that is at the least occupied and we also uh, even even if even though we have at least 11 channels to choose from we will only choose 1 6 and 11 because these are the channels that do not overlap with each other and what do I mean by overlap even if you select channel 1 and with the highest channel width we'll get to channel width uh, later in the video even if you select the largest channel width on channel 1 you will still not get uh, in terms of uh, um, channels bonding you will not get to the next uh, uh, channel which is 6 in, in terms of overlapping you will not be able to overlap with 6 and 6 will not be able to overlap with 11. So even though we have a lot of other options, we will only select 1, 6 or 11. So in this diagram, we can see that we have other Wi-Fi networks broadcasting all over the place. But just for this example, I will go and select channel 1 for my uh, Wi-Fi network. So go ahead onto your Unify devices and select your access point. Go into settings and expand right here the radios section right here and if this is on auto or any other channel change it at least in my case to one if you saw that in your diagram channel six was most vacant go ahead and select channel six all right so uh, we'll se we select channel one and we've applied it already but if you have several access points or at least more than one, go to your next, I mean, next physical access point and make sure that it is not set to one. Change it to something else. Again, go into radios right here. And if this is set to one, change it to six or 11. So don't let both of your access points broadcast on the same channel. In the 5 gigahertz space, it's less critical because 5 gigahertz is, uh, uh, let's say, faster, but it broadcasts in a narrower spread. But 2.4 is, uh, in some cases, even uh, goes through walls. So the first step for you is to select the most vacant channels. Uh, if you can see in the 5 gigahertz, 
nothing is getting at least nothing is getting into my space so my channels are completely wide open i definitely recommend sticking with 36 i have i've had the best experience with it and in the 5 gigahertz space at least speaking from my experience you can select the same channel for all of your access points unless there is something showing up right here so choose another channel but because access points are usually uh, spread around uh, far from each other they will not overlap in almost in, in, in no uh, situation so this number one will be selecting the most vacant channels number two is selecting channel width and channel width if I have to maybe uh, explain it in, a, in an example is like riding in a car on a highway and channel width will be selecting how many lanes you want to call your your own you're driving in your car and you say you we, this road has three lanes all of them are mine i want to uh, to use all of them so you will maybe uh, get the benefit of the road let's say real estate but you will also suffer from the traffic in each one of these lanes that, sorry, that's the most, uh, the most immediate example that came to my mind. When you select a wide channel width, you may be getting more throughput in some cases, but you will also be suffering from all the interferences and noises in these channels. So the thought of going with a higher channel width will result in higher speeds is not always correct. Again, according to your RF environment, I also, I always recommend selecting the 20 channel width for the 2.4 and 40 for the 5 gigahertz. This will uh, get you a more focused kind of broadcast uh, that will suit your needs. And of course, in the 5 gigahertz, you can experiment with 80. But you will have to see according, I, again, it's all according to your specific RF environment. These are my recommended channel widths. The last thing that I want uh, uh, to recommend uh, uh, that you do is band steering. In Unify and a lot of other vendors will allow you to create a Wi-Fi network. Let's take, for example, mine that will broadcast both in the 2.4 gigahertz and in the 5 gigahertz. In fact, I recommend that you use this option and not separate an SSID for 2.4 and a separate one for 5 gigahertz. You should definitely use this uh, multi-band uh, kind of option. But having said that, you probably have in your, in your uh, environment uh, devices that only support 2.4 and devices that support 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So enabling the band steering option will make the access point give a sort of a nudge to the devices that support 5 GHz and quietly transition them to the 5 GHz spectrum, giving them more throughput and leaving more throughput, more uh, empty lanes for the devices that can only talk in 2.4. And how do we go about setting the band steering? First of all, make sure that in your Wi-Fi network, both of these checkpoints, uh, checkboxes are checked. And again, go to your Wi-Fi uh, Unify devices, select your access point, go into settings, and open the band steering portion right here. And I always set it as prefer five gigahertz. This will actually make the access point give this uh, nudge that I was talking about and transition devices from the 2.4 to the 5 gigahertz even if devices connected to the 5 uh, to the wi-fi network sorry only in in 2.4 gigahertz maybe they were out of the coverage of the 5g when they will trans when when uh, these devices will be physically in the 5 gigahertz uh, let's say coverage area the, the access point will give them a nudge and move them over to the 5 gigahertz band so these are the three most basic things that you can do and anyone can do to improve the, uh, the, the performance and the stability of the Wi-Fi network, selecting a channel, selecting a channel width, 
enabling bend steering and I also talked about a bonus step that I want to, uh, to also share with you. So again, go to your access point in Unify, go to settings, and as you can see, you have uh, here trans transmit power. Now, a lot of people seem to think that the higher the transmit power is, the more performance I will get out of my access point, when in fact, this is not really the case. Keep in mind, some uh, uh, devices do not have the ability to transmit the same length that they can receive in. This is just, uh, uh, let's say, a, a non-conventional or, or an edge case, but this is exactly why my relative says his device connects to the Wi-Fi network and then realizes he doesn't have enough coverage and disconnects and again connects again because the transmit power was so high, the device, its device thought it was able to communicate when in fact it wasn't. So we dropped off of, of the network and then connected again. According to your RF environment, my recommendation is setting the transmit power into medium and not high. The higher you make your uh, access points scream, they may be getting out more, let's say, juice or more coverage, but not all devices and devices can play along with these uh, uh, coverages or transmit powers. So setting this to medium, at least in my experience, is always uh, getting more, uh, let's say, stability. Uh, so this is the number, uh, number uh, four or the bonus step that I wanted to share with you. Now, in Unify, one more th important thing before I sign this video off, we have done several uh, configurations here. We have tweaked and we have changed. We need to make sure that Unify do not come and override our selected settings with their Wi-Fi, I know how they call it right now, Wi-Fi AR optimization. I do not have enough confidence in this feature at this point, so I, I turn the auto optimization, let's say capabilities off. All right, so if you have this enabled, I recommend that you turn it off. The, uh, the optimization will come and revert your settings to what they believe is better, when in fact, I do not believe that they know better, at least in this point. So in order to not get everything overridden, select or unselect the schedule optimization right here. So guys, these were the most basic things I think that are easiest to implement that will probably give you a bit more imp improvement in performance and most importantly, stability of your Wi-Fi network. I'll see you all guys in the next video. Bye everybody, stay safe.